you know, for me, like stories are more important than anything. Stories are more important than things. Uh, like stories are, are what makes life interesting. And so for me, uh, my business is the storyline of my life. It is, I'm the main character. I'm the hero in my little story about business. And uh, for me, that's what business gives me. It gives me purpose. It gives me a story. It gives me, uh, makes my life interesting. And I would encourage anybody who's just getting started or who is in, who is in, in, in you know, year three, four, five in their business to think of it that way. It's like they are living out this movie and they are the main character and their business is the plot. And, and if you look at it that way, then it can be fun and it can help get you through the, the low points. Welcome friends to The Entrepreneur Speaks. I'm your host, Kofi Anumedu. Each week, I host an amazing entrepreneur on their journey, successes, and challenges. It is my hope that we will learn from their experiences as we all work towards living a life of passion and purpose. Brian is CEO and co-founder of Green Power, an online marketplace that connects homeowners with local lawn care professionals. Green Power has been called the Uber for lawn care by Entrepreneur Magazine and has over 100,000 active users, completing thousands of transactions per day. Before starting Green Power, Brian Clayton founded Peachtree Incorporated, which had a 10 million annual revenue before it was acquired by Lusa Holdings in 2013. He's my guest today on the Entrepreneur Speaks podcast. In this episode, he will share his journey as well as offer useful lessons and advice to you, our cherished listeners. Welcome to my show, Brian. Hey, Kofi. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Let's kick off by telling us a bit more about yourself and how your childhood was like. Yeah, so uh, I, I was born and raised in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. I was really lucky to have grown up in Tennessee because it was a growing place and it was a place where a lot of activity was happening. And And uh, so when my dad forced me to start my first business, it was kind of a good place to be. Uh, I was playing uh, Super Mario uh, World one day on a hot summer day back in the late 90s. And my dad came into my room and said, hey, we've got a job to do. We're going to go mow the neighbor's yard. And I didn't want to go cut the neighbor's grass because it was really hot outside and I was perfectly fine playing Nintendo, but it really wasn't <laughs> an option. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't grow up in a democracy uh, household. Uh, so this was not a request. This was an order. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> and so uh, luckily my dad ordered me to go mow the neighbor's yard because uh, I was hooked on entrepreneurship after that. I was hooked on the ability to make as much money as I wanted to make and work as hard as I wanted to work and, and kind of chart my own destiny. And by the end of that summer, I had a handful of, of customers in the neighborhood that I was cutting their grass every week and they were paying me and it felt good. And I just kept, uh, I kept mowing grass all through high school and all through college as a way to put myself through school. And after I graduated college, I had to make a decision. Was I going to go into the job market and make, take a pay cut? Or was I going to just stick with this lawn mowing business? I didn't really want to cut grass the rest of my life, but it was just a, it was just a good business. It was a, it, and it was something that I saw that could kind of help me uh, make something of myself. And so I just stuck with that business. And over a 15 year period of time, I grew that business to have over 150 employees and I got it over $10 million a year in revenue. And in 2013, that business was purchased, it was acquired by one of the largest landscaping companies in the United States. And uh, so growing that business from zero revenue, just me and a, a small push mower to over 150 people, I, I learned a lot of, of how, to, how to start a business, how to grow a business just through trial and error, uh, just through trying things and, and things not working and trying other things. And, uh, and that's what, uh, that's what, that's what allowed me to kind of cut my teeth on entrepreneurship. And then uh, after I sold that business, I, I started GreenPal, which is kind of like the Uber 
for lawn mowing. It is a marketplace that connects homeowners that need to get their grass uh, cut with people who make their living mowing yards. And so I was kind of solving my own problem with starting Green Pal. I, I used all of the experience that I had gotten over the last 15 years and, and put it in, put it to work starting a, a tech startup. So that's uh, that's 20 years of entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, two companies, both of them, I got over eight over eight figures in revenue, and both of them I have started with no outside capital and no investors. Yeah. So Brian, you have a very powerful story. Now I'd like us to break it down into pieces and draw useful lessons from it. You've given us an overview of how the journey has been so far. Now, let me take you back a little bit. Let me take you back a little bit. Awesome. So how did you get started in this business when you had no money? How did you go about it? Yeah, I learned really quickly that you as a person and your business are one and the same. So when you are a small business owner, your life is your business. And so that what I mean by that is the least amount of money that you can live on, the, the cheapest amount of money that you can survive on, that means you have more money to invest in your business. Okay. And so at a very young age, I was able to, to learn that, okay, if I can like reduce my rent uh, by 50%, that means that I can buy another lawnmower in three months. And if, okay. if I can just not buy new clothes this year and wear the same ones that I had last year, then that means that I can, I can buy a new pair of uh, hedge clippers uh, that will make me even more money. And so I learned at a young age that the, the, the model of make money and then put that money back to work to make more money was how I grew that business. And it's a simple philosophy, but, but it's just one that, that I has carried me through all, all through 20 years of entrepreneurship. It's, it's just to live as, as humbly as you can and to take every dime that your business makes and put it back to work in your business. And that was true all the way 15 years of growing that business. Uh, matter of fact, the first uh, employee that I hired, he made more money than I did. Uh, but I, but I knew that I was going to have to do that for a short period of time in order to figure out how to, how to grow my business and how to double my business, uh, by hiring somebody. And then the first salesperson that I hired, that person made more money than I did for, for a period of time. But I was willing to make those sacrifices, uh, because I believed that, that ultimately like one day I would have a big business and that's how it turned out. Um, and the ability to grow that business with no outside uh, investors and no debt is what enabled me to sell that that business 15 years later. Because when I decided to sell the business, I didn't have any debt. I didn't, and so, I, you know, I had a company that was doing $10 million in revenue and all of my competitors dreamed of selling their businesses, but, but they might have had a three or four million dollar business, but they also had three or four million dollars in debt. And so they didn't really have anything to sell. Whereas my business was debt free. I, I bought all of our lawnmowers and trucks and equipment just off of the profits that the business made. And that enabled me to build a very sustainable, healthy business that was able to be acquired. Very, very interesting. So I would like to know some of the challenges you faced while building this business. Can you walk yeah. us through some of the challenges you faced? Yes. So, you know, when you're, when you're in entrepreneurship, it's kind of like, uh, getting in the arena as a bullfighter. It, it is, it is a, it's a hard, hard way to make a living. It, it, there's lots of ups and downs. Um, and so for me, I always just knew that I was going to be working on my best idea and there was no, there was no quitting. There was no going back. There was no turning back. I was just always going to be working on the best idea that I had. And, and so that's one thing that's kind of kept me going through the, the ups and downs and low points. And there was one point, you know, uh, I think it was year seven or eight of running that business. The United States went through an economic uh, downturn in the, in the great recession in 2008 where uh where a lot of the economy just was cut in half and 
And I woke up one day and our customers weren't spending any money. They, they were tightening up and they were reducing costs and, and uh, we were losing customers because they were looking for cheaper alternatives to our services. And it was just a really tough time to run a business. And there was one Sunday night, I'll never forget it. I, I had to go, I was going to work the next morning and payroll was due and payroll was $120,000 a week uh, with the employees that I had. And I mm-hmm. only had about $30,000 in the bank. And so okay. that was a really, really, really tough situation to be in because I had to, I had to go into the office and look at a hundred people and say, Hey, we're, we're not going to be able to pay everybody today. We're going to, uh, we're going to pay everybody as much as we can, but, um, we're not going to be able to make payroll this week. And I'm going to have to ask everybody to, uh, make a sacrifice and wait a week or two. And I promise we'll make everybody whole. But we're, we're we've got a problem with the business, and 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 it, and it's my fault because I'm the leader, I'm the owner, and I have made a mistake somewhere. I don't know where, but but we have gotten in this situation, and 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 I'm going to need your, I'm going to need some time for us to work out of it together. And that was a uh, something that I was really terrified to have to go through. But as it turns out, it made us a better company. It made us a stronger company. We were able to identify uh, ways to cut costs and ways to operate more efficiently. And we brought our, our employees in on, on that problem-solving uh, exercise. We, we gave $100 to anybody that could come up with an idea on how to save the company money. And we had a little contest. And so every week we would, we would have a, have a contest where people would, would say, okay, well, I think we can, uh, we can turn the trucks off in the morning when they're just idling in the parking lot, uh, when we're waiting for our orders and that'll save us money on uh, gas that we're burning in the parking lot. And, and so not only did these ideas come from our, our people, but uh, they had ownership in them. And so they were more likely to execute the ideas. And so that Mm -hmm. was just one little way that, we were able to kind of work our way through a difficult time in business uh, and, and ultimately come out stronger in the end. That's very interesting. Um, you've talked about some of the lessons you picked up, but there's still other lessons you picked up during these difficulties. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I learned when you go through these tough times, you know, you want to feel like a victim. And as the business owner, you want to feel like a victim. Like, why is this happening to me? And what I realized looking back 10 years later, 20 years later, is that it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And it's happening for you so you can grow, so you can become stronger, so you can become more creative, so you can become a better leader, so you can build a better business. A lot of times uh, these downturns, it's an opportunity to, to take your business down to the down to the studs, down to the down to the core and rebuild it from the inside out. And so that was that was something that I learned, you know, in retrospect, looking back that uh, these these difficult times, especially, you know, with, with the one we're going in through now, are really an opportunity for you to grow as an entrepreneur, for you to grow as a business owner, to become more creative, to become stronger, have more courage. And, uh, you know, with without those low points, the business just isn't interesting. You know, it's not an interesting story. And and uh, if you're trying to, you know, I like to live my life as a story. Uh, and, and if you're creating an interesting story or interesting movie, you want you want the hero of the of the story to overcome some sort of challenge, some sort of conflict. And yes. that's how I look back 20 years, you know, in business is like, you know, as me as the main character, as the owner, as the leader of the company, you know, I was able to do things and triumph and have the courage to get through some difficult times. Without those difficult times, it's a pretty boring story. That's true. You run a tech company now, Green Power. Kindly tell us how it works. How is GreenPal structured? Yeah, so GreenPal is an is a marketplace. So it connects buyers and sellers essentially, kind of like Airbnb does for for people looking to book a room, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or like Uber does for people needing a ride. And so GreenPal okay. connects homeowners that need to get their lawn mowed, who want mm-hmm. their lawn mowed, to people who want that business. And so we, we are a multi-sided marketplace and we've had to uh, build almost two products, a product that homeowners use and a, and a, and a product that, that service providers use. And we've been at this seven years and, uh, you know, we're, we have several hundred thousand homeowners that use the platform today. We're going to do $20 million in revenue this year. 
but uh, we're a seven year overnight success. It didn't start out that way. It was really, really, really challenging to figure out the the, the dynamics of how to build a marketplace uh, from scratch, uh, you know, seven years ago. And uh, we just stuck with it. We just kept at it. We didn't give up. Kind of like my first business, uh, my two co-founders and I knew that, you know, the only way the only way to win was just by not giving up. And and uh, and and similar to my first business, I, I was working on my best idea. I didn't have any other ideas, and so there was just giving up was never an option. And so uh, we just stuck with it, and luckily we did, and we didn't take on any capital on this business either. You know, here we are. We've got a profitable business seven, eight years later. I think the main point I'm trying to make is is that these things take time. You know, if you're starting a tech startup from scratch, it takes time to get the ball rolling. It takes time to get some momentum going. You need to be willing to dedicate five or ten years on a project to to see it come come to life. Thank you so much for those words. Where do you draw your inspiration from to do all this? You know, for me, uh, the beautiful thing about business is that it can be the thing that uh, causes you, that enables you to make something of yourself. So, you know, as it turns out, making something of yourself, making meaning of your life, making purpose of your life is actually really hard. Um, But business is something that we all have access to. And if we really work hard enough on it, we can create an interesting story for our life. We can, we can have purpose in our life. And for me, that that's what business is. Business is the thing that lends purpose to what I'm doing. You know, I have a question I ask myself is if it weren't for me, then what, if it weren't for me X, if it weren't for me, then what would happen? Why should I get out of bed in the morning? Why does it even matter? And the answer to that a lot of times is my business. If it weren't for me, then there's thousands of people that make a living cutting grass that wouldn't have a product to use to, to make to, to make material income. If it weren't for me, my co-founders wouldn't have the uh, the, the opportunities that they have and, and vice versa, me and them. If it weren't for me, uh, my employees wouldn't get a paycheck this week. And so a lot of times for me, business is the source of purpose. It's the source of why I do what I do. Uh, and it's why I get out of bed in the morning. We are confronted now with a COVID-19 pandemic. And for most businesses, it's either had an effect on their operations or for some, it's boosted their operations. What indeed has been the effect of COVID on your situation? Yeah, you know, a lot of this just came down to luck. You know, if you were in the concert business, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, you know, if, if you're in the restaurant business, you know, maybe you can look at carry out, take out delivery. You can redefine your product line and just make it to where it's the best, uh, deliverable product, you know? So it just depends. It's, it depends on where you, your business kind of lies on that spectrum. Uh, and if, and if you just flat out got lucky or not for us, we got lucky. We really did. Uh, you know, uh, apps like Uber Eats and DoorDash and Postmates and Instacart, uh, and Rappy, um, they are all having banner years because of, of people uh, wanting to conduct commerce in a, in a contactless, invisible fashion. And so we are kind of riding that wave. Uh, we, we've, we've doubled this year. And because people, people don't want to have to meet somebody to get this service done. And we identified that pretty early on uh, as, as a way to kind of modify our value proposition uh, to be the cheapest, fastest way to get your grass cut, to be the way to hire a landscaper without having to ever talk to anybody. And so if you can use a, if you can use the, uh, uh, crises like this one and kind of reframe them and look for ways to, to use them against themselves almost, um, you'll find that you can create an opportunity out, out of, out of, out of a crisis. And, Sometimes it's not always the case, but sometimes you can really, really look for ways to 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 use the situation against itself, and 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 that's kind of what's what's helped us. We've we've been able to really dial in on okay, you can hire somebody to come mow your grass, even if it's four feet tall, with never even making a phone call or meeting somebody face to face, and that really resonated with people. Mm. What would you do different if you were to start your business today? What would you do different? Yeah, you know, experience is the best teacher. And so you always 
you know, looking back, my first company was a, was a landscaping company. It took me 15 years to build it. I could build it again today in three. Uh, my second company is a tech startup. It took me seven years to get to where we are today. And I could do all of that in probably two years. And so you really, you know, you don't, you, you look back and you would do a lot of things different. But the, the thing is, you don't ever know. You don't know. You, it's, it's, you don't know until you get in there and start really working on the problem and start discovering things and start learning from failures because that's the only way you learn is from failure. Success is a lousy teacher. And the only way you learn is from doing things that don't work. And then you figure out what does work. So that said, there's a lot of things I do different in both businesses. Uh, Particularly my second business, I would have learned how to delegate particular tasks quicker. Okay. Uh, and so when we when we started GreenPal, we didn't know how to code, we didn't know how to write software, and so we uh, we paid a development agency one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to build the first version of GreenPal. Oh, and it okay. was it was a total failure. It was a total flop. It didn't work. It didn't have the features it needed. It didn't have the. Mm-hmm. It didn't. It didn't. It just didn't flat out work. And we realized, wow, we're, <laughs> this is going to be a lot of work. We're going to have to really rebuild this thing. And at the same time, we're going to have to learn how to build software. We had to learn to teach ourselves how to write code and how to design software and how to market software. And so that pain it caused us to not delegate again quickly because here we, we delegated and, and, we, and we, we lost $150,000. So now we, we did it all ourselves for like four years and we were, we were scared to delegate again. Um, but now I have a team of 23 people and, and that are quite frankly, better at software design and better at software engineering than I am. And, uh, and now the fact that we can delegate and build this team is what enables us to, to do great things. And I wish we had learned how to delegate, delegate the right way quicker. All right. What books have you read that are instrumental to your philosophies on how to start, grow and sell companies? Yeah, I think, uh. The ability to pick up a book and read it is one of the most underrated exercises any entrepreneur can can engage in. And so for me, I'm always, you know, I'm not the smartest guy, but but I I know I can learn damn near anything. And uh, for me, you know, I'm always trying to look for books to read, audio books to read, to listen to. One book that really kind of made a lot of sense to me was a book called The E-Myth. And it's by an author named Michael Gerber. And that book is about, is about a lady that wants to, that, that loves to bake. She loves to bake cakes and she loves to bake pies. And she decides that she wants to start a pie shop because she just loves to bake. And she realizes really quickly that that is a big difference between baking pies and running a business that sells pies. And so the book kind of talks about this story of this lady and and this other guy that kind of her mentor that helps her realize, okay, this is how you build systems. This is how you build a real business that sells pies. This is how you create processes and and hire people the right way. And it's just a real simple story, a real simple book that kind of goes through the how to build a business the right way, a small business or a big business. And I wish I had had it 20 years ago when I started my first business. It would have saved me about five years of doing things the wrong way. But uh, that's a great book everybody who wants to be in business needs to read. We are just about wrapping up, but I would like us to spend some time to conduct this interesting but very important exercise. A lot of my listeners are either desirous to start their own business are in business, meaning they've gone ahead to set up a business. And there are others who are contemplating whether to leave their nine to five and also set up. So I want us to take them one, every category, and then you come in with useful tips, pieces of advice for these categories of people. So let's start off with somebody who is desirous, desirous of commencing business, desirous of starting from scratch. What would be your advice? What would be your tip to, to, to such a person? Yeah, so 
so step one, like manage your psychology, get in the game because only when you're in the game can you win. So you got to get in the game. Understand that uh, you got to get in business for yourself to really make something of your life, to make something of yourself. It's just it's just the one way to really to it's one sure way to do it and know that it's going to be five or 10 years before you really have something valuable. Uh, but your life will be very different once you once you get there. And and the other thing is is to look at business as a, almost like a video game. You know, if you want to take take Super Mario Brothers, you know, the problem is people starting business they 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 get worried about things that don't matter. Like they they're worried about Bowser uh, when they're on level one, and you don't need to worry about Bowser. You don't need to worry about the 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 last level. You need to worry about the first level. Get through the first level and raise up the flag. And that first level might just be getting your first hundred dollars in sales. Figure out how you're going to get your first hundred dollars in sales. Because if you can get your first hundred dollars in sales, then you can figure out how to get to a thousand, and then you can figure out how to get to ten thousand, and then you can figure out how to get to a hundred thousand. And so you kind of just chop it down into levels, and don't even worry about anything else until you get through one level to the next. Is kind of how you can navigate your way and and get over the the cold start problem that a lot of new business owners face, which is you're just overwhelmed with all of the stuff you think you need to do. When in fact, it's quite simple. You just need to get started, get your first hundred dollars or thousand dollars in revenue, and then worry about level two. Now, how about to someone who's already in business? Someone who's already in business, let's say you've gotten to use the video game metaphor, and let's say you've gotten to level three, four, five, and and you're stuck. Uh, you're just stuck, and you're tired, and you're and you're you're wanting to quit. So, you, how do you like? How do you keep going? And for me, it's like you have to find like meaning and the joy of creating something that people like to use or people get value from, and that makes their lives better. So, it could mean like. Like say you just own a like a little store and like and and people come and buy coffee or or people come and buy snacks or whatever you have to like find meaning in the joy of of people uh, getting value from that and that can be tough but but you 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 really really have to tap into some kind of desire to keep going um, and it's more than money and and so that's the like the first bit of advice and then the second bit of advice would be to Really bring in people who who have gotten further down the path, further down the journey, further into the video game than you have, and try to learn from them, and try to and try to learn from systems and processes that they have implemented, and try to implement those in your business to get to the next level. And don't try to do them all at once; just one thing. Like try to implement one kind of process, whether it be a sales process or some kind of inventory control process or some kind of employee training process. Try to just focus on one piece of your business that could be better and implement routines and processes to make it better uh, little by little. And this could take years to do, but if you're continually improving parts of your business, it'll begin to add up and you'll get you'll get the benefit of compound interest. We are just about signing off. What will be your general advice to my listeners? You know, for me, like stories are more important than anything. Stories are more important than things. Uh, like stories are, are what makes life interesting. And so for me, uh, my business is the storyline of my life. It is, I'm the main character. I'm the hero in my little story about business. And uh, for me, that's what business gives me. It gives me purpose. It gives me a story. It gives me, uh, makes my life interesting. And I would encourage anybody who's just getting started or who is in, who is in, 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 you know, year three, four, five in their business to think of it that way. It's like they are living out this movie and they are the main character and their business is the plot. And, and if you look at it that way, then it can be fun and it can help get you through the, the low points. Thank you very much, Brian, for sharing your journey with us. Hey, I, Kobe, you... I, re- I really appreciate okay. it. Thanks for having me on. This has been another exciting episode of the Entrepreneur Speaks podcast. My guest today has been Brian Clayton. And Brian is the founder of Green Power. He shared his experience with us today. Brian, we wish you the very best. Thank you so much and God bless. Watch out for my next episode 
I remain your host, Kofi Asari, and you may do. Stay safe and let's continue to keep hope alive. Cheers.